Hello, my name is Dr. Dean Laganowski. I'm a urologic surgeon at Midlantic Urology with Solaris Health Affiliates in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today, we're going to be talking about prostate cancer, treatment options, including radiation therapy and space or hydrogel. We'll also hear from a patient who had radiation therapy and chose to have space or hydrogel during his treatment. So, what is the prostate? It's a walnut-sized gland at the base of the male bladder, next to the rectum, and it's part of the male reproductive system. The organ surrounds the urethra, and it supplies the fluid that transports sperm during ejaculation. Next, we'll compare an enlarged prostate to prostate cancer. As men age, the prostate grows in size, and it can press against the urethra, causing bothersome symptoms. This condition is known as benign prostatic hyperplasia, also known as BPH, or an enlarged prostate. It's important to know that BPH is not cancer, and having BPH doesn't mean you're at a higher risk for developing cancer. However, BPH and prostate cancer may show similar symptoms, such as weak urine flow, difficulty starting or stopping urination, and an increased PSA, or prostate-specific antigen levels. Prostate cancer is the second most common cancer in men after skin cancer. Let's take a look at prostate cancer statistics. About one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during his lifetime. In 2022, it was estimated that there would be more than a quarter million new prostate cancer cases and more than 34,000 deaths in the United States. The encouraging news is that five-year relative survival rates for localized prostate cancer are greater than 99%, and the five-year survival rate for all stages of prostate cancer is 98%. So, what are the risk factors for prostate cancer? Several factors include age, genetics, race and ethnicity, as well as behaviors and lifestyle. The chances of having prostate cancer start rising rapidly after a man turns 50, and they continue to go up with age. Over half of prostate cancer cases are found in men older than the age of 65. Most prostate cancer occurs in men without a family history of it. However, having a brother or a father with prostate cancer more than doubles your risk. Black men are 1.7 times as likely to be diagnosed as white men, and Latino and Hispanic men are 21% less likely to receive treatment. Some studies suggest that chemical exposures, sexually transmitted infections, and prostatitis may also increase your risk. Most prostate cancers are first found as a result of screening, and it's recommended to start talking about screening at the age of 50 for men at an average risk, while those at a higher risk may need to start considering their screening as early as 40 years old. There are two ways that we commonly screen for prostate cancer in a patient without symptoms. A prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, is a test that checks for elevated PSA levels in the blood. And a digital rectal examination, or DRE, tests for irregularities on the surface of the prostate. If the results for either test are abnormal, further testing may include an MRI, transrectal ultrasound imaging, or genetic testing. The only way to confirm the presence and severity of prostate cancer is with a biopsy. The urologist will take small samples of the prostate tissue with a thin needle, and then a pathology report advises whether any cancerous cells were found. After a prostate cancer diagnosis, the cancer is graded in stage to determine the severity. Primarily non-metastatic cancer is graded in stage with T and M staging, the common cancer staging measuring the extent of the tumor as well as the Gleason score, which is a measure specific to prostate cancer. The TNM staging is the most commonly used staging system around the world. It determines the cancer stage from zero to four by measuring three different factors, the extent of the tumor, the extent of the cancer spread to the lymph nodes, and the presence of any metastasis. Prostate cancer is also commonly graded by the Gleason score, which assesses the abnormal cell growth within the tumor. Risk groups are defined by the grade group of the cancer and other measures. Generally, a Gleason score of six or less is low to very low grade disease, seven is intermediate grade, and a score of eight to 10 is high to very high grade cancer. There are treatment options for prostate cancer. Three common treatment options include active surveillance, surgery, and radiation therapy. Active surveillance means watching the cancer and its symptoms closely. 
Monitoring the cancer can include PSA tests, DREs, and regular imaging or biopsies. This isn't ideal for men with a fast-growing or spreading cancer. Surgery is an option to remove part or all of the prostate gland in a procedure known as a prostatectomy. This can be an open surgery in an incision through the abdomen or less commonly in the perineum or a laparoscopic surgery, which means that the prostate gland is removed through smaller incisions, usually with the help of a robot. Surgery requires general anesthesia and an overnight stay in the hospital and is considered an invasive procedure. The risks are much like those of any other major surgery. Potential side effects include urinary incontinence, meaning urinating more often or leaking, sexual dysfunction, as well as loss of fertility. Radiation therapy is a treatment where high energy rays or particles are used to kill cancer cells. With external beam radiation therapy, or EBRT, radiation is delivered from a machine outside of the body. This is typically a painless outpatient treatment and can take a few minutes. EBRT doesn't require general anesthesia or an overnight stay in the hospital. Potential side effects include urinary incontinence, sexual dysfunction, and bowel dysfunction, meaning that symptoms like diarrhea, blood in the stool, or leakage from your rectum can occur. When radiation treatment is delivered from inside the body, it's called brachytherapy. The radiation is delivered by radioactive pellets, also known as seeds, that are placed directly in the prostate to kill its cancer cells. This option is not as commonly available as EBRT, and it's generally used for men with low-grade prostate cancer. The initial procedure to place the seeds is an invasive procedure that typically requires general anesthesia and an overnight stay. The potential risks from the treatment include urinary incontinence, sexual dysfunction, and bowel dysfunction. For both external and internal radiation therapy, there are several treatment options. EBRT can be delivered through 3D conformal, intensity modulated, image guided, stereotactic, or proton radiation therapy. Brachytherapy can include low dose rate, high dose rate, or permanent implants. Other prostate cancer treatment options include cryotherapy, which uses cold gases to freeze or kill cancer cells, hormone therapy, which aims to reduce the levels of male hormones that slow cancer growth, chemotherapy, which delivers anti-cancer drugs orally or through an IV, immunotherapy, which uses drugs to stimulate the immune system and destroy cancer cells, but this has not been shown to cure prostate cancer. Targeted therapy uses drugs to identify and attack the way the cancer cells grow, divide, repair themselves, and how they interact with other cells. HIFU, or High Intensity Focused Ultrasound, is performed under anesthesia and delivers a high intensity treatment to target areas of the prostate with a rectal probe. You should speak with your doctor about the risks associated with each treatment option. It's important to understand potential radiation side effects. The prostate is in close proximity to other pelvic organs, including the rectum, the anal sphincter, the bladder, urethra, and penis. This means that radiation side effects can affect urinary, sexual, and bowel function. The rectum is considered an organ at risk, or OAR, of receiving unintentional radiation dose. This is described as rectal toxicity and may lead to diarrhea, pain, bleeding, or having to defecate frequently or urgently. This is why we consider rectal spacing for radiation therapy. A study on radiation side effects compared outcomes between patients who underwent radiation therapy for prostate cancer. Some of these patients in the study received space or hydrogel as a rectal spacer prior to starting their radiation therapy. Using the space or hydrogel was significantly associated with less digestive, reproductive, and urinary toxicity. Space or hydrogel is an absorbable hydrogel that temporarily creates a space between the prostate and the rectum. It's designed to reduce radiation dose to the rectum and help to minimize the side effects of radiation therapy. It creates about 1.3 centimeters of space between the prostate and the rectum. Space or hydrogel is a soft gel-like material mostly made of water and polyethylene glycol or PEG, a material that's commonly used in other implants. A little space can make a big difference. Space or hydrogel is clinically proven to minimize bowel complications, urinary complications, as well as sexual complications from radiation therapy for prostate cancer. Now we're going to hear from Dr. James Gray about his experience with space or hydrogel, both as a doctor and as a patient. 
My own journey in prostate cancer personally started about a year and a half ago. What I feared about being diagnosed was just knowing that I was going to have to go through the process. I had the same common fears that any patient would have. What are going to be the side effects in me personally? I've been a radiation oncologist for over 30 years now. As a radiation oncologist, I get to see virtually the entire spectrum of cancer patients. I was in a position where I was in one of the earlier stages of the disease so I could make a choice. I had essentially surgery as a choice and I had radiation as a choice. I've been treating prostate cancer for a long time and one of the issues we have using radiation and any mechanism is that there are sensitive organs nearby. Primarily we worry about the bladder and the rectum. The problem is the prostate and the rectum live right next to each other. So how do you actually give radiation to one and not to the other? So Treating prostate cancer is easier if you can keep the rectum a little bit out of the way. When it came to me personally, it was more, you're not going to treat me unless I have space or applied for me. This new mechanism of inserting a hydrogel between the prostate and the rectum in a very uh, minimally invasive mechanism, very minimally invasive manner that allows you to keep the prostate and the rectum just a little bit separate from each other, it really gives you an advantage. It was tested in clinical trials several years ago and proven to reduce the likelihood that the rectum would be irritated as a result of treating the very nearby prostate. So when I learned about it, it was a to me, a no-brainer, this is going to be a great improvement in how we can do radiation treatment. And I started offering it to my patients. So it's one of those kind of win-wins that we come across in medicine every once in a while that allows us to improve our outcomes without having to pay a large price in how much is this going to cost or are there downsides to this. Like most of my patients, once the spacer was applied to me, I couldn't tell a difference. I didn't have any difference in my bowel function or my urinary function. So it helped confirm for me, yeah, this actually doesn't hurt that much. And yeah, you walk out of here almost like it wasn't done. That's very gratifying. But knowing then and seeing my own CT scan, and I know that we're gonna be able to execute a plan to treat my prostate without including my rectum in part of that planning, it really hit home. This was not just one of my patients. This was me, this was my pelvis on that screen, and I could see that I was gonna be able to treat my prostate more effectively without involving the rectum. So it was, you know, kind of an eye-opening experience. In summary, radiation therapy can be effective in treating prostate cancer. As with any procedure, there are potential side effects. Due to the prostate's proximity to the rectum, prostate radiation therapy can cause damage to the rectum, and that can lead to issues with bowel function. Space or hydrogel is designed to temporarily create a space between the prostate and the rectum, thus reducing radiation dose delivered to the rectum during that prostate radiation therapy, which may lessen the damage to the rectal tissue. So, what are your next steps? It's important to know your risk level. Talk to your doctor about screening and learn more about the treatment options available to you. There are many resources available, including the American Cancer Society, Zero Prostate, and the Prostate Health Education Network. To learn more about Space or Hydrogel, text SPACEOAR to 73771. You can talk with a patient education coordinator live by calling 781 527 4675 or learn more at spaceoar.com. Thank you for joining me for this presentation.